What's up, everybody? This is Bryce Kenny, driver of the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior Monster Jam truck, and I am here with my buddy, Colton Eichelberger, who apparently has given us a fresh shave of his face. <laughs> but most importantly, my man is our Triple Threat Series Central Tour Champion. Man, congratulations on the big win. You're looking good, buddy. You staying busy? Thank you. Absolutely. You know, that win, that was awesome. You know, but I didn't want the year to end like it did. You know, it's out of our control. It's out of our hands. But we came out on top. You know, we ended the year with 93 points ahead, I believe. And uh, I honestly wasn't comfortable. But, uh, you know, like, like you said, it's, uh, it's crazy times we're going through right now, Bryce. And I wish we could have finished the year off. Well, you've got a, a ton of trophies right behind you, event championships. Uh, one of the things that has always been missing from your mantle, though, has been a tour championship like this. And uh, I know that that is a huge monkey to get off of your back. Nobody deserves it more either. Dude, you have been so dominant over the last couple of years. Uh, you're one of the most irritating people for me to compete against just because it seems like you, you've got the Midas touch of Monster Jam. It seems like everything you touch turns to gold especially behind the wheel and uh it's just really cool to watch that success but dude i'm so happy that you finally got that tour championship and uh man it's really exciting for you and the whole max d team i would imagine that your whole family is pretty pumped up about it too absolutely absolutely you know it's been a long time i mean we've had a my six year drive and so i mean being on triple threat from year one just for me to look back, I mean, from more Monster Jam to Triple Threat has just evolutionized so much that, you know, I was telling someone the other day, in Triple Threat on the first year, if you did a riding wheelie and drug the back bumper across the pad, there is no doubt in my mind that you were getting a 10 and you were winning that event. And now if you don't go hold two nose wheelies and turn them into reverse wheelies back up on the, you know, the tail and ride it off the pad, you're getting, you're getting six, you know what I'm saying? And it's just crazy how it's evolutionized, but it's been a long time coming for me because, uh, you know, I've gotten second every year and, and you know, the, I forget which year it was exactly, but uh, I was in first place and I actually had to go fill in for my dad on stadium tour in his monster jam truck because he had gotten hurt and I was ahead by a hundred and some points when I left my tour. And that was my year. You know, I had felt like I had, you know, this was only like week four, and I had a 100-point lead. I felt really confident. But, uh, you know, it was a great opportunity for me to be able to go out, fill in in a stadium tour. It's the first stadium tour I got to do. And, uh, you know, I, the first show out, won the overall event championship, ended up winning more, uh, you know, events later in the year, finishing out for him. And almost, you know, I was really close to honestly passing Lindsey Wink, who was in the, the lead that year. So that was, that was a great opportunity. You know, but it really hurt inside, too, that I, I couldn't get that, uh, you know, the Tour Series championship. But uh, And then getting second place the last couple of years, you know, it's just been eating me. And this year, this year was, was the one. I told myself, this was the one. I'm going to win this Tour this year. And, you know, like you, like you were going to mention, Justin Sipes, Mark List. I mean, they're some of the top competitors in Monster Jam mm -hmm. that uh, I knew I had my hands full, especially coming out week one, Nashville, Tennessee. I got one point from quads because I had blown my quad up twice. And uh, I thought, wow, if this is any indication of how this year's going. This is not good. And I ended up leaving Nashville like 20 points behind, behind Justin Sipes. And I'm like, this isn't good. You know, it's not good. But week two, everything, you know, the Moss Gym crew, they had everything tight and right. Everything went as planned. We got the points lead back. And after that, I was, it's win each and every event, get as many points as we can no matter what, and uh, put on a show for the fans. And that, that mentality right there, that took us to the top. Well, and you talk about Justin Sipes and Mark List. Obviously, I know those guys are competitive. Justin Sipes with that awesome background from, from uh, dirt bikes. And, and uh, you know, you look at what he has been able to do in just a very short career. But I know that you're really competitive. You and I have competed at a little bit of everything. We could be in Paxton, Illinois at Monster Jam University and grab a golf club and you and I are competing, right? <laughs> Hitting the ball over your pond in, your, in Tom's backyard. 
right? I mean, we, we can compete in about anything. I know I'm one of the most competitive people I know. I know you're one of the most competitive, competitive people that I know. But Mark List is very competitive. I was on tour with him back in 2017 on a triple threat series, and he and I went head to head. Well, it looks like we, were, we came to blows. We didn't come to blows. <laughs> Right. Uh, but we were uh, very <laughs> upset with one another because it is competitive. You are giving your entire effort every single event. You're, you're putting your body through uh, just this this rigorous turmoil over ATVs, the Speedsters and Monster Jam trucks. And then you've got to pay attention to points because no one likes to lose. And you've got three people, you, Justin and Mark, that are very good at what you do and you're very competitive. But I want to ask you a question. Who would you say is the most competitive minded person uh, out of you three on that tour? Uh, um, you know, that's a good question, Bryce. Uh, I, I, like you said, I'm very competitive, but I don't think there's, I don't think there's a way I'm more competitive than Mark list. Like you said, it's uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm competitive on the track. I'm competitive out there and I'm competitive taking a 60 and seeing who can hit the ball over the pond further. But I, I don't think there's I won, a way that way. I could be more just competitive. For, just for the record, yeah. for everyone knows, I won, and I'm not going to let Colt Eichelberger live that down either. But sorry, go ahead, continue. <laughs> no, that was a good plug. You should have plugged a sponsorship or something there. Yeah. there you know. <laughs> but uh, he's, uh, he's so competitive on and off the track, you know, that – off the track, I think I love the guy to death, but I think sometimes it's just a little too much, you know, because in the end of the day, I'm competitive at heart, but I know what I'm there for. You know, I, I'm there to please the fans. They got a great show. As soon as that show's over, my job's done for the day. You know, I, there's no reason to, you know, bring that stress of losing or anything else back into the locker room for me. That I, the fans got a great show and they're going home happy, remembering what I did, remember what all seven other athletes did. Cut, you know what I'm saying? Then me and you can compete to eat, you know, who can eat the more, most wings or whatever, you know, after that. But it's. <laughs> but the last couple of years, though, when you were placing second, right? I mean, at some point, I know that that was irritating you because you were somebody that deserved a tour championship. This year, you had such a big lead. It's probably easier for you to say that when you are in first place rather than being in second trying to chase down first. And I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong that, you know, if, if you're in second trying to chase down first, do you feel like it's, it's, it is harder to uh, uh, essentially just kind of ignore the pain that comes along with losing? Uh, and were you able – did you approach this season any differently, whether it was from the very beginning or because you were going through the season in that top spot for the majority of it? You know, what it comes down to for me personally is uh, – you know, my first, I'd say my first three or four years, I would stress out so much. I would stress out. I mean, I, like you said, I'm competitive. I would be the guy that would go in the locker room and slam my helmet after the show's over. I would, you know, if I thought I should have won something, if I, you know, and I, brought, I let all that aggression build up. And in the end, it was hurting me. It was hurting me more than it was doing good for me. And I thought the whole time that, you know, oh, I'm mad. I'll have the drive to want to go out there and, but you just can't do that man you can't that's just not how it works for me what works for me is relaxing and chilling and not worrying about the points this was one of the years that yes I want to win that tour I want to be number one I want to be out on top and get that championship but worrying about the points made me screw up more than it made me succeed if that makes any sense because it's the last that's I learned that from last year I was I mean yeah, you can see me on a the last weekend of tour in second place, 100 points behind, and I'm just cool and chill. But then, you know, I'm just – I'm really not. On the inside, I let me – let it eat me away, and that created my drive for this year. Mm -hmm. I had a whole new game plan. I mean, I've gotten second place four years in a row, Bryce. I had to change something up, and yeah. so I did. I changed something up. I quit worrying about, you know I, – I put more focus into winning and doing my best in each and every event rather than going out there and doing, you know, just mind mind over doing best and putting on a cool show for the fans rather than I got to get that number one spot. Let's go out here and total the truck. You know what I'm saying? It just, uh, I learned, I learned I've, I mean, I'm the only 
driver that's been on every triple threat series I learn each and every year. <laughs> well, and, and you think about the, the competition you went up against, how did they motivate you uh, with every single competition? What I mean by that is, you know, Justin Sipes might be a little bit stronger at one competition. Mark List might be a little bit stronger at another. And all the competitors on your tour on the Triple Threat Series Central. Uh, but did you see what one of them would do and then adjust? Or are you saying that that game plan that you had didn't matter what happened before you? You already knew what you were going to do in the in the Grip Skills Challenge. You were, you already kind of knew what you were going to run in freestyle. Or did that change based on who just ran in front of you? Um, it doesn't really change. I mean, our tour was pretty good. I would say about uh, everybody kind of. I mean, most of the time, you know. Yeah, me and Justin would do some of the same stuff quite often. But it's it if someone went before me and and I had a pretty much set game plan each and every each and every two wheel skills each and every not freestyle. I couldn't say because you know the backflip being implemented in arenas that changes things up drastically for your yeah. game plan who gets to do it you know blah blah blah, blah or who's going to get first and what i'm and uh so the two wheel skills if justin went before me we did have similar runs but that just drove me to do what he did better you know what i'm saying and it's not that i would copy exactly what he did but a lot of people knew I did the same thing almost I mean I didn't do the same exact thing but I did pretty much the same thing each and every two wheel skills run each and every weekend each and every show mm -hmm. so if you go out there and do what I do you know what I'm saying that's you saying hey look I can do that too I'll go ahead and do it and get a nine point whatever but I'm not going to change it up too much I'm just going to try to do it better do it longer do it bigger whatever depending on what I'm doing mm -hmm. Well, and you had you had the most event championships on Triple Threat Series Central. Was that important to you? I mean, you see all the trophies behind your head there, right? I mean, they've got to mean something to you. Did your confidence build with each one, or were you able – is that something else that you were able to kind of put off to the side and just go to the next event? How does Colt Neichelberger manage that confidence with success as it came along to you this season? Um, you know, it, it did build confidence. That's – those trophies, that's not what I'm there for. You know, like I said earlier, it's uh, it's doing the best I can, the coolest thing I can do, you know, for the fans. And at the end of the night, it's the icing on the cake, getting the trophy, getting the overall event championship, man. But it's them. I was more mad if I went out there and screwed up, honestly, because I knew that Max D didn't deliver what Max D is all about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, the, the trophies is cool. It's great. You know, winning – the event championships, that's that's what came, you know, the event championships came easier to me as I would quit focusing on winning the event championships each and every show, you know, is I take one event at a time, start off with racing. I want to win racing. I want to be the fastest racer out there. Get off for racing. I want to be the fastest ATV rider. You know, that it came down to that. I didn't really go into each show with an end goal of, I need to be out on top with that trophy doing that interview at the end of the night to tell these fans I came with the goal. I'm going to win as many events as I can. And that brought me home more trophies this year. Well, I, I know you swept all four event, uh, uh, event championships in Newark and Cleveland. And I mean, dude, you just did a lot of winning this year, man. And it's a testament to you. It's a testament to the whole team, the crew guys, the technicians there at Monster Jam that did such an amazing job. I want to talk about somebody else that's in your corner though. And it's your brother, Jared, all right? I, I know that he is a huge fan of Colton Eichelberger, a huge fan of Team Max D, and he's no stranger to Team Max D because he has spent plenty of seasons behind the wheel of the Max D Monster Jam truck. In fact, he and I were also on that same tour in 2017 with Mark List, the Triple Threat Series West together. So I know his ability. I love the stuff that Jared does because he will come to your defense in a heartbeat on social media. <laughs> and I like seeing the comments that he makes. And some of it can be really, really aggressive. But one of the things that seemed to get him fired up were the Monster Jam power rankings. And you would come out of a weekend and, and do essentially everything you could have possibly done in that event to win, win competitions, and it should have adjusted you and certainly sent you up the power rankings. But, in fact, maybe in that – there was one particular week that when I don't think you actually moved up, or maybe you moved up one, but you didn't go up to the top half of those power rankings, and he was all over uh, a Monster Jam essentially saying, how does this even work? 
right? We're trying to figure well, I'm try, how is how is Cole Eichelberger, who won everything as we that weekend in that event, not go to number one? And he was frustrated. I love the brotherly love from him. Uh, what does it mean, first of all, to have Jared Eichelberger in your corner that you know without a doubt he's got your back? And then secondly, how did that affect your mentality knowing that the Monster Jam power rankings, it, it, maybe you did, you did everything right, but maybe you still didn't go as high up in the power rankings as a lot of us probably felt like you should have that particular week. Absolutely. You no, know, having uh, my brother in my corner is awesome. You know, we were on a team together for years. He was my crew chief when I started. We traveled the world together. You know, he's been my idol since day one, and I've looked up to him. We're seven years apart, and it doesn't look like we're seven years apart. You know, a lot of people think Jared's younger than me because I carry the beard a lot. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's awesome, you know. And I, I, love, I love to have his support even, you know, it, it extends to social media. You know, if someone's on my stuff, hagging me or whatever, he's there. If something like, per se, Monster Jam, he doesn't agree with, he's there. And, it, and it's not to – hurt other people's feelings or anything it's to it's to back me up and you know he's he's an awesome guy and uh but no it's awesome having him in my corner he's been in my corner and everything I've done in life so driving monster jam trucks right now and him having the support for team max d and he supports all the drivers you know he'd do anything for anybody and it doesn't matter honestly which team you are but well, he, no, it's, he jumped uh, all over me. It's pretty after, sweet. The power. After one of our Monster Jam episodes, he jumped all over me because I had I had given credit to Tyler Meninga for a move, and and he and Jared was correct. Tyler, I kind of gave the credit to Tyler innovating that move, and a lot of the nose wheelie stuff, and and I I know that uh, the popper came out of the Team Max D camp, but you're somebody that has gotten a lot of. Uh, probably not enough credit for your innovation of new moves. You have created a lot of moves. Uh, and Jared will jump all over if, if someone's giving credit to someone like Tyler, who arguably is, is uh, one of the best at, at, at perfecting moves whenever somebody does create one. But to Jared's credit and to your credit as well, you have been monumental in actually creating these new moves moves as well do you ever feel like that you get overshadowed for some reason at your ability to innovate this new stuff for monster gene uh absolutely you know there's certain times that it, it's funny to sit back and you know i'm not much of a guy to say something you know i'm a guy that's going to keep my mouth shut and let uh, let time take its toll you know what i'm saying and so that uh, i don't even know what to say to that honestly it's <laughs> It is kind of frustrating, though, because, you know, not just me and Jared as the innovators, it's, it's our dad. It's the 12-time world champion. You know, he was the first to do a backflip. He was the first to do a double backflip. He was the first to do a front flip. You know, and he doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, there's guys that did it first time in, in competition, but that seems to get blown out of proportion, too. And, you know, it's kind of eaten at me for years to watch so many people get credit for something that, he has been thinking about or you know we thought about before whatever it is but Tom thinks about this stuff for years before the plan actually comes together and it's not just him thinking about it and talking to someone else about doing it he's engineering it engineering the ramp engineering the truck in his head to process how this is going to be done how are we going to do this and the people that you know the people who do it in a show it can either be that it wasn't meant to be it, or not I guess it wasn't it was meant to be but it was not planned you know what I'm saying and then then their credit and yeah that that their credit blows up but that that does bother me a little bit but I'm man you know everything happens for a reason I'm gonna sit back and uh, the the innovation you know it's it's something we love to do we like to find new stuff you know the you can watch an arena show and see 25 nose wheelies now I'm ready to innovate something new We've got some stuff that we're thinking about. It just comes down to we got to get over this uh, pandemic we got going on here. And I had a lot of time to think and uh, put the brain to work. So we'll see what we can come back with. How do you want fans to remember Colt Michaelberger? Uh, ultimately, you've got plenty of years left as a driver behind the seat and behind the wheel of Max D. But uh, when your season career is one day over down the road, 
how would you like the fans to remember you? Whether it's driving style, personality, whatever it is, what do you hope that they, they, that they think of Colton Eichelberger whenever they remember you? Um, what I hope the most is the crazy guy, the <laughs> stunt guy, the guy who does – will try any trick. I, honestly, I, I love doing stunts. That's one of my big things, you know. That's uh, – I, I want to go big. I want to push – these trucks to the limits and I want to push monster jam to the next level. That that's my main goal right there is to be the stunt guy, be known as a crazy guy. Like my dad is honestly, you know, he's, he's done majority of monster jams, crazy stunts. Mm -hmm. And I want to fill his shoes and be the next. Yeah. You, well, you're definitely going to do that, my friend. So Colton, when you look at all of the different events and competitions in the triple threat series, which one is ultimately your favorite to compete in? Um, I'd have to for sure say probably freestyle just to the fact that number one, I can show my personality. I mean, when Max D pulls into a building, if there's Max D fans or any fans out there that have seen Max D before, they know what Max D is there to do. You know, it says it in the name, maximum destruction. We're going to go big. We're going to tear that truck up. We're going to run it until that thing doesn't run anymore. And so freestyle has got to be my favorite because I fit the Max D truck. I love tearing stuff up. I've tore stuff up with you before and lots of shows. And uh, so I'd say freestyle is, I mean, that you can innovate so much and it's so unexpected that, like you know, in the Triple Threat Series and the arenas, something can clip you up and put you on your sidewalls to your cage in the matter of seconds in the blink of an eye. And it's the same with stadiums that you can go out there and make a small jump, a medium jump, or a large jump and clip something, and next thing you know, you're upside down. So I love the unexpectedness just to the fact that some of the craziest wow moments come from unexpected stuff. <laughs> well, man, this has been just so crazy to think about what we've – uh, all been going through with the shelter in place stuff. And, and uh, I know that you have got to be bored because you're very active, right? You're always either out there working or you're, you're running around doing monster jam events or you're golfing on a league, which I didn't even know existed. And I golf quite a bit. So uh, I need to get me into a, a golf league, but man, what are you doing to stay active, to stay busy during this shelter in place thing that we're going through? You know, honestly, I've been more busy now with this shelter in place than I have when, when everything's normal. And that's because uh, I do agriculture work back. So agriculture is an essential job. So I still get to work each and every day with more time. I've created more customers. I've built a bigger customer base. I've got a lot more ag work to do, you know, and it's farming season here, man. We're starting to plant crops, corn and soybeans. So staying busy with that has been crazy and honestly when we get rain or if we get a little rain we can't be out in the field or doing ag work i'm i'm helping a guy pour concrete for a concrete business that builds grain bins so i uh i'm staying really busy man it's not even it hasn't the break hasn't even been a thing for me other than like the first week that i was supposed to be at a show and got sent home so well that's I, and, and another thing is too man the, the the biggest thing that I've noticed for you though on social media, buddy, you had that nice you had that nice facial hair going, and you look so handsome. And and then all of a sudden, I get on this Zoom, and you are like baby face McGee over there, buddy. I mean, I don't know who convinced you to to shave. You're engaged now, so I don't know if Morgan, you know, put down the law and said you're going to look sharp for this interview or what. But I appreciate whoever did. Right, right. Yeah, you know, the mustache I had, uh, I didn't feel it was appropriate. And, <laughs> and uh, Morgan, she doesn't really mind it. Man, she's, she's pretty cool with whatever I do. Because as you, guys, as you know, as the fans know, I change my facial hair a lot. I, I'll usually rock a beard, you know, a shorter beard. Sometimes I'll rock a longer beard. I didn't start rocking the mustache, though, until this quarantine. And I figured, you know, everything's so messed up right now. Let's see what that looks like. And Morgan was cool with it, but who shut me down was my mom, man. And when mom says something, you listen. So yeah. <laughs> the mustache is gone. I'm actually, Bryce, I'm just trying to look like you. Oh, good, good, man. Well, you know, I'm waiting on my own haircut to happen as well. So as soon as Great Clips opens back up, I'm going in. My hair has never been this long, so uh, I got to figure that piece out. But 
Uh, so what's a typical schedule look like for you now? I mean, you graduate, you just got your degree last year. Congratulations on that as well. Um, and so now what are you doing day to day? You're getting up, you're going to work still. You, you said you're, you're slammed. You've never been this busy. So what's a typical schedule like for you right now? Absolutely. It's uh, waking up from anywhere between 5 and 6.30 every morning, uh, you know, doing the daily routine to get up, going to work. And it's it just depends on the day here right now. Um, Illinois is kind of crazy. As you know, we had snow two days ago. It was like 70 a month ago for like a week. And then it went down to 50s. And then we had snow. We got like six inches. Then it went to 70s again. And then last week we got snow again. So the weather here really determines, in culture, the weather determines a lot. So it determines if you're going to make money that year or not make money. It can determine so much. So for me, on a beautiful day, I'll go into work at 7 o'clock in the morning, and depending how the day is going, it could be 6 or 7 o'clock at night, and it's just, it's literally get home. It's been such a long day. Get home, eat supper, shower go to sleep and start or you know get ready for the next day but uh you know when I help pour concrete that's that's a lot more physically demanding than my ag work the ag work is a lot of you know on your feet going 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 picking something up heavier once in a while you know blah 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 I could talk about that all day but the concrete man that's I did it when I was 16 years old I worked for the same company Craig's Concrete and they pour grain bin foundations. So this isn't just like, you know, going out and pouring your driveway, your patio, your sidewalk. It's yeah. uh, it's 12 foot forms, you know, walls. And it's, it's a lot, man. So after a day of that, I tell you, that's uh that is my working out right now. Yeah. I see your, <laughs> I see your muscles, buddy. You're looking pretty stout still. So that's good. So at least something's going in your favor. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, buddy, man, congratulations, dude, on such a successful season. I am so happy that you got that tour championship. Uh, Triple Threat Series Central champion, my main man, Cole Michaelberger, Team Max D. You finished the season number six in the power rankings. And uh, I know that you were devastated just like the rest of us when ultimately the Monster Jam World Finals got canceled. What was your initial reaction, of course, when you saw that news? Man, I was upset. But in, in the end, if it's going to save people's lives, man, it's, it's going to be worth it. You know, it's, it's going to get that much better. We're going to have that much bigger of a world finals next year. It's going to be great. I'm ready to get back in the truck. I'm ready to perform whether it's, you know, anywhere, whether it's at Monster Jam University, at a show. I just need a little throttle therapy, Bryce. If you know I like what I'm saying. it. I like it. <laughs> well, buddy, man, congratulations, dude. I know that a lot of fans out there are missing you. They are missing Team Max D uh, getting out there and performing in front of them and causing that maximum destruction. But, uh, dude, huge win for you and the entire team. I'm so happy for you, dude. I can't wait to see that big trophy that shows up that you can put there on your mantle along with all those event championships as well. So, dude, take care of yourself, man. You're looking good. Go take care of Morgan. Make sure she's, you know, gets a pizza tonight or something. You can order something for her. She deserves it for putting up with you, my friend. But t stay safe, stay healthy. Can't wait to see you again soon, okay? You as well. Thank you, Bryce. All right, man. See you soon, buddy. Bye. See ya.